Hi, I'm David. Welcome to Space Tech Tips. In this video, we're going to be talking about the ZWO Electronic Automatic Focuser. Uh, so here's all the contents right here. We got the focuser itself. We have the bracket. Uh, we have a couple of Allen wrenches. Uh, we have the USB cable. This is the flexible uh, coupler right here. Uh, so with all that being said, why would you want to use an electronic automatic focus or, e or EAF? Well, a lot of times uh, with a lot of the modern technology we have, like with the ASI Air, you can do focusing automatically from inside. Uh, you can have a filter wheel, seven different filters. You can have it automatically focus for each one. So you're inside, you're in your living room. You say you want to get, uh, you know, RGB, uh, HA, oxygen, whatever. It'll refocus for every filter, you know, while you're mo watching a movie or whatever. Uh, so that's what's great about that. That's why I'm doing it, and that's why I'm doing this video right now. So, first things first, I'm going to follow these directions. It comes with a little direction thing when you buy the ZWO EAF. I bought this myself, by the way. Uh, first things first, remove the course adjustment knob on the telescope focuser with a suitable size wrench. In my case, that is the M4 I have here. So, so what am I doing exactly? So there's a couple of knobs here. There's this rather large one up top here. At, uh, and then there's a, a fine focus knob right there. Uh, typically I'd use the fine focus knob to do the minor adjustments uh, to get the manual focus done myself. You know, this particular telescope comes with a Batinov mask. You can use that on the diffraction spikes method. Uh, I've used that a few times. Um, it's okay, um, but if I can have it all automated, that would be ideal. So uh, that's what we're doing today. So uh, there's that side here with the refined focus knob. You're in, that's not the side you're going to be doing it, this on. You're going to be doing this on the side with the, the, the other side. In this case, there's kind of a temperature gauge on it. So when you look at the knob itself, there should be a couple of black screws on the knob itself, right, right in there. I'm going to uh, loosen those up so I can take the knob off. All right, here we go. All right, off. May have loosened those up before. Okay, uh, so that's step one. We've taken this off, let's set that aside. Okay, step two, install the flexible coupling on the telescope focuser shaft and tighten the lock screw. Okay, so add my decoupler or coupler right here. In my case, there's one side that is the side that attaches to the focuser itself, the EAF body, and then the other side attaches to the telescope. All right. So I've attached it to the telescope itself. You, so a couple things to keep in mind, you don't want it rubbing against the telescope. You also don't want it that far away either. So there's, uh, you want kind of that, you want it a little bit far, but not too far. So uh, there's, I don't know if you can tell, but there's part of this adjustment knob that's flat. If you're able to tighten the screws at least one of them on that flat side. That's probably ideal if I take a guess. All right, there we go. So just gonna do a quick test here. All right, looks good. All right, step three, attach the focuser body to the flexible coupling and tighten the lock screw with the wrench in the package. All right. So I have the EAF here and I'm attaching it to it. So one thing that you need to keep in mind is you need to keep the, you're going to attach a bracket here and you want to be able to attach the screws. So there's, 
There's two screws up top here, one, two. And then there's the adjustment knob itself right here. Uh, what you want to do is make sure that the screws are going to be able to attach to the bracket eventually like that. And the bracket is going to go right, right about there. If you can see that. So that's how it's going to go. The bracket's going to go there. And the, so we're going to be attaching the body. Right, facing up, I guess you could say. Assuming that your focus knobs are in the top position here right now. Again, make sure you, that you don't, it's not touching so it's not rubbing against the side of the EAF, but, uh, all right, so it's kind of just hanging out there. Uh, so step four, attach the bracket focuser and then fix it to the EAF body with the screws. All right, so in my case, I have this tightening screw here. So when normally when I have the focus setting I want, I screw that in and it keeps it keeps it there. But that's also one of the, the we need to remove that so we attach this bracket. All right. Now in my case, I have another I have another couple screw slots on the other side that I can take off to make room for these little screws. You can see it in my case it's, uh, it's one of these slots here in my case is the middle one with the William optics. Now you need the M5 Allen wrench for these screws. Now when you tighten it for the first time, you want it on there where it's attached, but not so hard that you can't adjust it more because you want, you want everything in place and then you want to adjust it a little bit uh, before it's in its final placement. And then once everything's in a good spot, you go ahead and do that final tightness. Okay, at this point, all the screws are attached, so you can go ahead and tighten away. Okay, so at this point, you can see it, but I have two screws attached to the autofocuser itself, and then I have two screws attached to my telescope. And they're tightened up, good to go. All right. Probably really hard to see for you, your end, but uh, there's there's the decoupler, right? or there's the coupler, and there's a little bit of space between both. All right, so now we have the EAF bracket, four screws, coupler, good to go. Okay. Step five: check whether the installation is robust. Well, that's kind of what we just did. We just make sure everything's nice and tight. And all the brackets are on. All right, step six, connect the AEF to the ASI air computer uh, slash cool camera, hand controller, or the temperature sensor. All right, so here we have a USB cable right there. That's, that's where you want to attach this USB cable. And it looks like you can attach it to the camera itself or the ASI air, whichever one. If you have a temperature controller or hand controller, you can attach that right there, okay. All right, that's all I have for today. Uh, if you like what you saw, please click like and subscribe and I hope to see you again soon, thanks.